Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Circle that word rest. We're all looking for it. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest. Circle that for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Everyone in here, as I said at the beginning, on a week like this, with racism and murder and strife, is looking for ultimate rest for our souls. <clears throat> and Jesus says, come to me, come to me, because I want to deal with, I mean, I, to be, I needed this text this week. I needed this text this week because I started to get, I started to, to, to get frustrated. I started to feel angry and frustrated and depressed and sad about the state of things. All right, and I started to, to hone. I'm not talking politics here, all right, for the next few minutes. I'm talking theology. I'm talking about listening to the prophets and Isaiah 58 say you need to stand up for the, for the widows and the poor and the oppressed. You need to stand up for the powerless, both the black community and the police officers trying to protect that community. There's tension, there's strife, and I start to feel this tension of, man, what are you supposed to do with all of this in life? Why did the prophets speak about the poor and the widows and the orphans and the need to stand up for them? Is this what you're supposed to dedicate your life to, Mark? The same thing that, that Jeremiah and Isaiah and John the Baptist and Jesus did, fighting for the poor and the oppressed and those without a voice, which is what we're talking about here. I did uh, inner city ministry in Toronto for a lot of years in a poor black community. And here's what I recognized in that community. They had less power, period. And white privilege became very clear to me. As these little junior high kids, I did a junior high ministry. I mean, these kids are in grade six, seven, eight. You know what they had to do? Because their dads were gone, they had to bring their two-year-old, three-year-old brothers and sisters to the youth ministry. Because them, at grade six and seven, had to become the parent to their grade three and four year olds, or their, their, their age three and four year olds. Because dad was gone. One of my kids, who I love dearly, stabbed a guy on his way to youth group. I mean, this was the reality that they lived in. And white privilege became very clear to me because I began to see in this community see, no one in South Surrey, when their parents get divorced, ask the question do you think she's going to go to college? It doesn't happen here. Not even a question. In that community, that's it, man. Go to Hispanic LA or Black Toronto. Your parents get divorced. You gotta take care of your family. Forget school. You have other priorities now. This is something that as white people, it's a sensitivity we don't understand. And so we say dumb things. We need to stop saying dumb things from a place of privilege and recognize their reality to love and to serve and to see. See, the gospel, you read Galatians 2, Paul's all about the gospel means the church doesn't look homogeneous. It doesn't look like one race. It looks like all these races coming together and he calls Peter out for doing this racial thing where there's division and the gospel brings together. That's the point. And so we're to be people who go, man, what is, what is God doing in the midst of this hurt and this pain and what is our role as the church? You know what our role as the church is? It's to, it's to understand that and it's to love and serve. It's to let people know, man, God made everybody in his image. And yet we've treated some worse than others. And so we need to recognize that as the prophets constantly point us to and say, be conscious, be aware of it. Love and serve and elevate. 